Uh, so I, I'm sort of concerned with Paddy and, and Tom back this week, those two. Yeah, and College Asney as well. Yeah. yeah, so that's that's good news. We have good availability at the moment, so um, in some ways selection's a challenge, but at the risk of repeating myself, we almost never look at our team as what is the absolute best 22 and sort of think in the context of the overall year and the individual priorities in terms of um, management. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll play a different team this week with those guys coming back, but... Um, there will there'll be a continual shuffle there as the year goes on, we suspect. What does that, so what does that do for Mark O'Connor? I and mean, usually it's him and Michael Neal head to head. What's, uh, what does that do for sort of his setup as well? Yeah, I don't think that affects Mark. Um, and again, without sort of telegraphing our, our matchups, there's a few of their players, more than a few really, who you just need to put a lot of thought into, which um, you know, is, is never simple. You know, it might sort of seem simple when you when you get to it in the end, or you look back on what we've done in the past. But um, you know, they've shifted a little bit in terms of the way they play, and some subtle tweaks with personnel as well, which means that we just need to make sure we're thorough in the way we approach it. This time will be different to last time, and the next time we play them, it'll be different again. I'm sure. How did you absorb the? Uh... Sorry, no. I'll come. Sorry. Let's keep going. That was. How, how did you absorb the Charlie Cameron? No, we just always had him on the board, so it's um, play on uh, as far as we're concerned. Look, I think the broader conversation is one worth having. I don't feel like I have anything to add to it uh, right at the moment, except to say that we're really clear on what the AFL is trying to do around dangerous tackles and, and anything that has a potential to cause head trauma. Now, I think the conversation's broader than that in this particular instance, but there's just not much that I can do kind of to, to help that conversation at the moment. So, so as a senior coach, do you have a, a, a take on the way it has played out? Do you have a, a point of view on it? Or just not one you're willing to do something with? Yeah, I think that's probably the best way of putting it. Yeah, I've, I've got a view on it, but I just don't think I can be constructive around that conversation at the moment. Um, and, and largely that's because, look, I'm... I'm I'm generally not afraid to contribute my opinion, and I think that's um, reasonable. It's just much more challenging when you're playing that team this week. I wouldn't like anything that I say to be misconstrued. Um, and, and importantly, when, at least this is only my opinion, it's not reflective of um, our club generally, but when I saw it, I expected him to be playing. So it's not like, um, it's, not like it's overly surprising. The, the surprising part is how they got to that point. And then if a player with a similar record from your team, would, would you be expected to use that loophole? Oh, well, you have to now. You have to now. Um, whether you agree with it or not, you'd, it's incumbent on you to, to use that. Um, it would be offensive to any of our players to suggest that they're of lesser character um, than the two players in recent history who have, who have successfully used that clause because there are plenty of others who have asked for it. Um, and been denied, which which is highly offensive. What was your record like at the Try Ever use a good bloke clause to try and shave a couple of weeks off? It was better than you would think. <laughs> I know you've got low expectations. No, hey, no, that's, that's some. <laughs> Have you started to come down for, for those three ends this week? No, not, not, not exactly. It's. Um, yeah, it's. Look, it, it's. It's a challenge for us to get it exactly right this week. And I suspect we'll have weeks where we look back and think we, we didn't get that exactly right for that particular week, but the flow on to later in the year um, could well be a positive. So um, but we're obviously advanced in those conversations, but um, yeah, just a little way off being able to confirm it. Shadow Neal, hit three, played for the Walkers last week. Yeah, I think it's um, reasonable, and I've flagged this previously, that um, that we will play Hawkins, Cameron and, and Neil in the same team at some point. Obviously, the way we sort of think about our Ruckman sort of builds into that um, conversation as well. Um, so, yeah, we, we're really pleased with the way um, he played, and, yeah, it would, be, it would be our preference to keep going with him. Like you said repeatedly, we don't know the best teams are yet at this point in the season with Brisbane... What are your expectations of them getting into the weekend of the 
oh, we just always take the approach that we look at teams when they've been at their best. Um, and I guess fortunately, in a way, that was pretty recent with Brisbane. You know, the, um, last Thursday night um, at the MCG, um, you know, against a, a good team, they played well. Um, so kind of the first three games for them feels like a, a distant memory. I know they've played two games um, at the Gabba. It's, it's a bit of an unusual situation that for a team that is so good um, generally, but especially good at the Gabba to have not won there by round six. But, yeah, I think we're talking about a different phase of the season to those first three three games. I remember last year, you know, when you were sort of struggling to find some momentum this season, a few of you guys talked about getting that swagger back that you had in 2022 and maybe just trying to, to kickstart that within the group. You're five and zip. Do you feel like maybe you've got starting to, to swagger a little bit? I mean, you, you're right in the pointy end of the ladder now. You, you've built a really solid base to really kickstart what more to be something, you know, quite significant. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's really solid just yet. It's obviously better than um, having a shakier start and feeling like um, you're chasing your tail. But, but again, I think that comes back to availability and, and the, con the contribution that that makes to form sort of more than you're just sort of off your game. And, and the, the reference to swagger, I actually don't love guys that play with too much swagger. Um, the reference last year to that was... We felt like we, we were a little bit too far in our shells and sort of had forgotten how good we could be. Um, so at the, at the moment, look, we feel like we're playing OK, but again, you sort of look around the competition, there are so many good teams that we haven't played yet. Um, and that's going to be rectified a bit in the next four to six weeks. Um, so we'll have a bit of a clearer picture. But again, I think you know from listening to me before, I'm, I, I don't subscribe to this idea that oh, these two weeks are going to be in order on sort of how good you can be. Um, the, the, the competition, I, I suspect, naturally is going to ebb and flow and teams are going to sort of work within that. So our challenge is, yeah, not to get up on your toes too much because, you know, we haven't lost the game yet. But if we lose a few here and there, then, then we also shouldn't drop our bundle. So it's that consistency that is more the way we think, but I completely get that that's not your job, sort of to manage expectations and talk about consistency across the course of the year, you've got to um, amplify what's happening in the here and now, and I, I respect that. You know, the, the, this, this round is a good example of that. Sort of Every game looks like a ripper to me. So my guess is we'll come away from this round and people will jump to conclusions that probably don't end up being accurate in the medium term. Gary Rowan popped his head in again before after he came back in the BFL. <laughs> Starting to come into consideration now. What's the timeline for Gary? Yeah, it's look. It's not this week, but he he's had a long build into playing his first VFL game last week. Um, so it wouldn't surprise me at all if it comes pretty quickly from here. Um, but again, he's sort of one of those guys that goes into that mix um, where we want to consider a, a, a big squad of players. Um, it, 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 we, we are not thinking when he's fully fit. He plays in this spot, and the guy that's in that spot goes out of the team for a month. That's just not the way we're thinking about it. You said he could be playing in different roles in the VFL. The name in the back line did that eventuate, or was he mostly playing forward? Oh, look, we he he played mainly forward. Um, I would caution you against taking too much notice of the way the teams are picked. Um, I never look at it for a start. Um, I don't even know who does it. Andrew Mackey, do you do it? Pat, yeah, and, and media team, but they have more say in it than our um, coaching staff. But it's not necessarily a change of role specifically. It's more just um, opening up the range of options that we have for him. Um, Max Holmes, obviously, the, the contract talk's going to bubble away until he signs on the dog line or, or doesn't. But I get the feeling maybe there's been a little bit of progress. Is there progress on that? And is it closer, do you think? Oh, I don't know. I could give you my impressions, but like hand on heart, I just that's not that's not my role. Um, what I do know is we have about half of our list who are out of contract, so um, I completely get that there will be some who are of more interest than than others. But um, yeah, I mean, in, in terms of the list management stuff, I, it's a bit like. Charlie Cameron, I, th I think I could say something that's very likely to be misconstrued and um, later I have to go back and clarify it. So it's best yeah. you direct all those calls to Andrew Mackey. Yeah, I, I completely get that, but because you've got so many players out of contract, is the expectation from a, from a footy department that we need to potentially 
potentially lock at least one or two of those away early so we can get them going? Because the longer you, you leave it... No, no, no they're, they're not. None of them are dependent um, on anyone else. They're all happening in isolation. So um, getting a couple of them done now doesn't affect the rest of them one way or the other. D does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're, they're all independent. Yeah. And I, personally, I'd be comfortable if they're all done in August. Well, there's no rush from uh, the head coach's perspective. That might be different to other people internally, but I'm comfortable with it. Josh and Owen, uh, in Europe, um, will he be back so early next week? Will he? Yeah, he'll, he'll be right to play next week. So it's just an example that we believe in really strongly. Like, there are times in your life where football should be the absolute most important thing in the world. Um, but those times should be few and far between. And when there's a competition, um, doing the right thing by your family um, trumps it. He can't miss his sister's wedding in Ireland. He had to go back for that. Do you think every club would do that, though? I don't think about it too much. Um, it's probably... It's an interesting thing for you to think about and to ask others about, but um, the most important thing for us is we're clear on where we stand. Our players understand that, that that's the way we think about it.